Hi, I'm Mohamed Zaboy, and I'm an entrepreneur from Soweto. Soweto's come a long way, from a small township to a mini city of its own. Soweto's got some really, really nice suburbs, like Deep Cliff Extension, but the locals call it Deep Cliff Expensive. Orlando is known as a suburb that had the first brick houses built in Soweto. Orlando Stadium for its iconic games between Kaiser Chiefs and Pirates, and most importantly, Villagazi Street, where Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu resided. To the west of Soweto, you find suburbs of Dobsonville and Protea. These two suburbs are actually very cosmopolitan, fresh, young, and very new. Right next door to Soweto, we have a neighboring suburb, which is Aldorado Park. For a little adventure and a little fun, Soweto's got so many night spots, from the news cafe at Mamponya Mall, to your Villagazi Street Sakumzis, to just chilling at Chuff Posey just between the towers and having a simple bright face, Chisanyama. Something very close to my heart is actually seeing people move back into Soweto, growing businesses, remodeling homes. It merely says to us that Soweto's a growing city. There's way more to this place than what we think. Soweto needs to be discovered daily. I'm so proud to call Soweto my home, and this is my neighborhood. What is a bank at a time like this? In a world filled with uncertainties, where lives are put on hold, business paused, and working together means staying apart. At APSA, being a bank means staying connected. It means being a part of your future, providing relief at a time of need, and doing this through effective, secure online platforms. It means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant. Being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further. And that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning, 
an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you, helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Rigo fail, so Once as Amal San, that is African Nasty. Good evening and welcome to episode 35 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Zamantungwa Kumalo. It's a Friday. I don't know how much of a difference it makes for so many of us who are, of course, going to be at home, but I'm sure we're all looking forward to going down to level three restrictions on Monday. And of course, you know, during the course of next week, we'll also look at how that actually impacts us. But for tonight's edition of the Property podcast. I'm joined by Muzwa K. Zim, who is the manager of data analytics at APSA Home Loan. And we're going to have a very interactive question and answer session. If you're a first time homeowner or home buyer, rather, this is the episode you do not want to miss. So do send through those questions and comments um, that you'd like us to deal with this evening. But before we get to that, um, thank you so much for joining us this evening, Muzwa K. Um, I think I want to actually get into you know some data that I think is absolutely essentially come up with i know that the apps's uh, home owners sentiment index you know speaks not only to apps's customers but customers across the board can you perhaps t- give us a sense of what this index is and some of the research that's come out for quarter one good evening Uzama, and good evening to all the viewers yes the, the apps homeowner sentiment index is basically a measure of consumer sentiment regarding the property market in general in south africa Now we've been running this index for just over three years now and we release uh, reports quarterly. Uh, What our findings are for quarter one um, is that the HSI showed us that confidence in the SA property market has fallen by 3% as compared to quarter four of 2019 and it's currently sitting at 73%. So basically 73% of respondents answered that they're confident in the South African property market. Now, bear in mind that when we ran this survey um, for quarter one, uh, we hadn't yet gone into lockdown. So the sentiment is quite indicative of the direction of the confidence levels of the respondents in the general non-lockdown market. And and Muzino, what were some of the concerns that homeowners were essentially showing in quarter one? So respondents showed uh, quite a bit of concern about the economic outlook. Uh, despite the interest rate cuts, uh, which we had a 25 basis point cut in January this year and another one in March. Um, The other two interest rates having happened in in quarter two, so we'll get the results of that in in our next installment. Uh, But sentiment in the market basically tended tended towards uh, reduced activity with fewer respondents considering it an appropriate time to buy, invest or sell property. That's actually quite interesting. I think I'm certainly looking forward to seeing how it's going to look as we're slowly easing back into, uh, you know, the new normal as it were, because I don't think uh, we're going to see anything remotely close to what we previously had before. And what would you say were some of the key trends that you were seeing in the market? So in quarter four, we had... um seen that uh, there were concerns around political instability, um, but these concerns were subsiding. 
and properties appeal as a secure asset were increasing. The picture did change in, in Q1 of this year due to the current uh, economic uncertainty with many respondents uh, citing COVID-19 specifically. We also found that there's still a belief um, among respondents that property could help them weather the storm of economic un um, uncertainty. Um, so a negative outlook was cited by more respondents as being the driver for them, either considering it's a good time to buy or a bad time to sell property. So essentially everyone was being fo forced back into their home. We also then also, uh, saw that the market continues to be favorable for buyers with low prices being cited by respondents assessment of it being a good idea to buy or a bad idea to sell. Basically, it's still a buyer's market out there. And it's certainly a sentiment that we've been showing uh, Muzi right here on the Private Property Podcast, this idea that not only are we currently in a buyer's market because of COVID, but we're actually already seeing it being a buyer's market pre-COVID. And, you know, just in yesterday's episode, we we're actually looking at whether or not you should be taking advantage of this, of this global pandemic we find ourselves in and, look at, and looking at some of the opportunities and the threats that we're essentially finding because of this crisis. And, you know, to speak to that crisis, you know, how are these quarter one trends different to what you would have anticipated or what you will anticipate post-COVID? So let me discuss uh, maybe some of the things that the pandemic has done or is doing and how these um, relate back to the property market. So some people and then many people have actually already started feeling um, this, that it has reduced um, household income or at mm -hmm. least uh, put it in a more precarious state. So naturally consumers are likely to be more cautious about uh, consumption spending. People have been forced into their homes, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and families have been trying to figure out how to squeeze in work, schooling, housework, um, relaxation in the same space, uh, meaning that we will potentially see a rise in the popularity of larger homes with uh, work and study areas. And then thirdly, um, the limited human contact and mobility um, would have encouraged uh, digital adoption, although um, we have seen um, some um, I guess, early indications that uh, especially people who live by themselves are actually lacking that human contact. Um, so some people are actually now starting to opt to, to phone into the uh, contact centers. Uh, now, the structure of the market after the recovery um, will likely be affected by these trends. And we could see things like a jump in digital adoption and an increase in consumer price sensitivity. We're also ever likely to see um, uh, this, uh, discounting in the importance of uh, living close to commercial hubs um, as working from home gains some stickiness. Uh, families potentially moving um, in together and immigration sales slowing um, as pros prospects reduce in other countries. Um, we expect uh, COVID-19 to impact the home ownership uh, mindsets and reactions across what we've identified as the housing ecosystem. So we think about it in terms of um, those who are renting, those who are buying, those who are living in their homes, selling and investing. And as a result, we're embarking on um, additional research to gain more insights um, around our customers and how we can see this landscape changing over time. And, 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 and was, you know, even though one knows, or rather no one knows for certain what the forecast for, um, you know, economic impact post-COVID, how is APSA essentially going to navigate that terrain? Sure, that's, a, that's a, an, an interesting one. So uh, basically, we now expect uh, the economy to shrink by 9.7%, um, down from um, our earlier expectations of a shrink of 6.4%, uh, and we're likely to see this activity or 2019 pre-COVID activity come back in 2023 and, and beyond. Um, so we'll definitely be monitoring sentiment in the coming months, uh, together with how we see the market uh, progressing out of its current state. Um, in terms of um, how we'll weather the storm, I mean, we kind of um, all joined at the hip and we need to uh, navigate the storm together. Um, the one thing that we are very careful about is making sure that we treat our customers um, fairly because they will remember how you treated them in the in the most difficult of times. So okay. we kind of um, um, have that um, one meter plan, the 10 meter plan and the 50 meter plan. 
and that's such an important thing, um, you know, Musi, that you said that oftentimes, certainly as customers, we do remember how different corporates reacted in times of crisis, whether they were the ones who stuck to the rules as they were, or they were able to adapt to the environment that we find ourselves in. Given that this data is now, you know, in the public domain, how can people take advantage of essentially knowing this? So if we have homeowners or prospective homeowners who are looking at the homeowner sentiment index and getting a sense of what other people who are already homeowners, what kind of insights should this kind of data essentially give them? How should they be thinking about um, you know, reading a report like this or even listening to this podcast and getting a sense of how other homeowners are, um, how they perceive essentially the property market? Yeah, so I, I think it um, it definitely helps to read um, up on general trends on what's on on what's happening around the world and what we're seeing happen around the world. Um, I normally find that this is a good place to start, um, and then after that, where I see the the HSI kind of bridging a gap, it's sort of bridging that gap between what we're seeing as trends and what we try to do with this report is we try to quantify what um, what the trend represents. Um, and then it can sort of guide you into these are the types of things you can start looking at, and then you can get down into the granular um, level of detail. So for example, if we're now looking at um, the whole idea about it being a buyer's market, um, uh, we can kind of talk about it in general terms, and then you can uh, pick up a copy of the home owner sentiment index, and you can then see um, how the index how the index is tracking for um, people wanting to buy property or people um, not wanting to to sell property, and you can actually trend it over time. And when those indicators then show you that it is uh, potentially a buyer's market, you can then start uh, using platforms such as private property to search for properties, um, really look at what prices are doing over time. Uh, but it's important to consider the trends and consider all the research around it so that it can direct that um, research that you then do at a granular level. We're going to go for a quick break, Muzi, and when we come back, I want us to you know, look at some of the questions and comments that we have sent through. I think a lot of prospective home buyers uh, you know, certainly have a lot of questions for banks, especially as we've you know, cited earlier, we've seen lower interest rates and even homeowners currently have a particular sentiment around those um, lowered interest rates. And viewers at home often want to know whether or not they should be buying now, given that we're seeing, you know, 50 year low interest rates, or whether they should rather, you know, pause, observe where the market is going to go, observe how much higher we're going to see the interest rates um, rise, which is something, of course, that we're already anticipating. Uh, to our viewers at home, do send through those questions and comments, and we'll be dealing with them right after this. I'm, of course, speaking to Umuzwa Kizim, who's the manager of data analytics at APSA Home Loan. We'll be back just after this. What is a bank at a time? like this in a world filled with uncertainties where lives are put on hold business paused and working together means staying apart at absa being a bank means staying connected it means being a part of your future providing relief at a time of need and doing this through effective secure online platforms it means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further and that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning, an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you, helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Once as Amal San, that is African Nasty.
Welcome back to episode 35 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Zamantungwa Kumala. I'm joined this evening by Muzuwa Kizim, who's the manager of data analytics at APSA Home Loans. And we've been talking about the APSA Home Owner Sentiment Index, which is essentially a measure of consumer sentiment regarding the property market in South Africa in general. And it doesn't only measure um, APSA's clients, but also looks at you know, other clients from different financial institutions. Now, in the event, as we were saying before the break, that you know, this is incredible data that homeowners or even prospective homeowners can essentially use in navigating their home ownership journey and seeing what the sentiments in the market from fellow homeowners or those who are not already homeowners from people who already are homeowners, how can people essentially get this kind of data? You're saying that uh, it comes out on a quarterly basis. How can they ensure that they are subscribed in order to receive the data? So you can email us on uh, APSA Home Loans at apsa.co.za. It's one word, APSA Home Loans at apsa.co.za. And just um, let us know that you'd like us to add you to the mailing list, and then we'll send you the, the report on a uh, quarterly basis. Um, the results of the report are also uh, published by various news outlets as soon as we release it as well. So, you know, Muzi, I often ask a lot of, uh, I've certainly asked some of your, your colleagues at APSA, and this is one of those questions that we're certainly going to continue asking whenever we speak to a bank, um, because we're seeing such low interest rates. And of course, it's the issue of whether people should opt to you know, fix their interest rates. Um, a lot of people have been asking us right here in the comment section around sentiments from a bank, whether or not they're currently looking at getting into fixed interest rates with their clients. You know, they we're looking, we're seeing certainly people who are uh, exploring um, whether changing home loans or restructuring their home loans because they want to take advantage of these historically low um, interest rates. So are we seeing a sentiment, not only from APSA, but banks in general, of getting into a fixed interest rate, particularly for a home loan during this period? So in terms of fixing interest rates, um, it's, it's um, an actually uh, a very interesting fix um, that we've got. Um, it's actually a marketplace that gets created and, and the marketplace has uh, sufficient liquidity. So at this point in time, if you'd like to uh, fix your interest rate, you can uh, get in touch with us and we'll definitely be able to uh, give you a quote for what your interest rate will be, uh, should you be fixing your interest rate. So if you fix your interest rate, it does tend to be uh, slightly higher than the interest rate that you're paying now, but at least you know that you won't have any um, surprises as the interest rate keeps um, uh, rising. And I think, you know, that's one of those sentiments that I've certainly heard within um, other homeowners or other investors that some of them are looking for a lower rate than what they're currently having. So we're essentially shopping around to see which bank uh, is even open to that kind of conversation uh, because we don't get a sense that all the financial institutions are perhaps open to that conversation. So one of the things, of course, is in the event where we've, we, we have prospective home buyers who are looking to enter this property market right now, um, they've read the index, they get the sentiment um, from fellow or other homeowners what are some of the tips that you would give them in navigating buying their home for the first time, especially those um, who aren't as clued up about what is currently happening? They're hearing murmurs around, you know, low interest rates. They can afford it. And it's not like we we're saying yesterday. It's not a false affordability. Uh, so they're going to be shopping within their, their affordability range. What kind of tips would you give those prospective home, those prospective new home buyers in terms of navigating their home ownership journey? Um, so the first thing and a very important thing I would say you need to do your research. Um, you don't want to be you don't want to find yourself in a situation where um, you went into uh, buying a new home um, only to realize that you potentially paid more than what um, the market um, uh, would justify uh, paying for um, the type of house that you purchased. Um, secondly, uh, make sure that you budget um, adequately. Um, you need to defend your, your good name at the credit bureau. It's the only way that um, you can have a good relationship with financial service providers um, over the long term. Um, and then thirdly, I would say don't be shy to, to ask those who have walked the path. Um, there are many uh, professionals um, who, can, who can walk the journey with you. Um, so at the bank, we've got um, 
home loans consultants that are more than uh, ready to assist you on your journey. Uh, but there's other role players in the industry. Um, I know that private property um, puts out uh, various articles out there. Um, there's estate agents that can help you walk the journey. And then never underestimate uh, the, the amount of help that you can get from family and friends who have walked the path. And I think then to speak to those who are already, um, you know, homeowners and are probably already feeling the, the economic effects of this COVID-19 crisis and are very likely struggling to service um, their home loans, what kind of payment relief does APSA have on offer for them? So we've designed um, a payment relief um, program for our clients who um, have had um, either a reduction in their income or a loss in, in income. Um, it's basically uh, three months uh, where you will not have to make your, your bond payment. Now, um, this is available to our clients who are currently in good standing um, because, um, I mean, we'd like to, to retain those clients. Um, so how it basically works is you can either phone our contact center on 0861-222272, or you can email bond RS. So bond Romeo Sierra at absa.coza, um, and then we'll guide you through the process. Um, so the three uh, payments that you don't make, um, we will, however, continue to uh, levy interest over those three months um, and our service fee. Um, and if you've got uh, insurance, we'll also add those to, to your um, uh, our total outstanding balance, although you don't have to service them over the three-month period. And then what we do is we then uh, recalculate the term of your loan so that um, uh, after the three-month uh, period has elapsed, your payment does not exceed um, what you were paying before. And then essentially, we take those um, three payments that uh, we've given you, uh, the three grace um, payments, and we add them on to the end of your uh, loan term. And in the event, then, Muzi, uh, that people at the end of the three months are still finding themselves in a financially difficult position, um, as you said, I mean, I think even of COVID, um, and if anything, it's, it's, it's quite fantastic that a lot of financial institutions were, were proactive in coming up with solutions fairly early on um, in the crisis as we had lockdown. However, we know that the full effect of the, the crisis is probably not going to be felt now. Perhaps we might be feeling it in September, October. How do they mitigate not being able to make those payments in the event where post that three months they still don't have means to, to do so i think if you reach out to the bank um we we kind of uh, eventually uh, standing in the same corner um, i know that uh, when there's difficulties with payment it doesn't always feel like uh, uh you you're in the same corner as the bank uh, but at the end of the day um when a bank has to go through a repossession and a forced sell process um actually it, it, it hurts the bank as well. Uh, um, it's actually not something that, uh, that we enjoy doing. Um, so reach out to the bank. Um, let's see if we can uh, sort of make a plan. Um, there's various um, other options that are available. Um, and, and one of the options might, or the most um, uh, suitable option might actually be in that uh, we help you to actually sell the property um, so that it's not a forced sale. Because if it's a forced sale, you end up getting a lot less for the property. Um, so we've also got that option where we can actually help you sell the property and get a get a fair price for it, uh, settle your bond, and and perhaps even get some um, cash out. And and I think was one of the questions that was certainly have been coming out is whether or not um, banks in general, and I suppose here APSA specifically, are actually looking for new clients. So looking for new home loan clients um, during this particular crisis, or is that a, a, a department that certainly for the time being is, is almost on a will be back after the crisis? So are you signing up new home loans? So when people go to privateproperty.co.za and they see great property and they go and view from next week onwards, we know that uh, state agents are going to be able to view and they, they really fall in love with the property. They sign that OTP. What is APSA currently open to, you know, extending those credit facilities to clients? Yes, so we're definitely still open for business um, and, and we're still uh, processing uh, applications. Um, we're not necessarily um, aggressively pursuing growth um, as we were um, before the pandemic. 
Um, however, we'll always be open for business for good clients. Um, so if you're a great client and you've got a great property, um, we're, always, we're always ready to, to make a deal with you. And the, the last one, Muzi, is around you know, funding of, um, to entrepreneurs. So essentially, the ways in which entrepreneurs can, can prove to the banks that they are actually, um, they can afford to service a home loan facility. What are some of the tips that you would give for entrepreneurs or even freelancers who do have a relatively stable income, but aren't salaried like uh, you know, a lot of people are who typically go for a home loan? How do they best navigate that home ownership journey? Um, I think let me maybe take a step and a half um, back to sort of explain, um, I mean, uh, I know as, as banks, we normally get uh, quite a lot of flack about how uh, difficult the process is if, you, if you're not a salaried individual. Um, I mean, our, our, as a bank, we're, we're a deposit taking institution. So we're taking other people's deposits um, and people are trusting us with their money. And then what we then do is we take the money and we're on lend it to someone else who wants to wants to buy a home. Um, so Zama, if you've given, if you've trusted us with your money, um, we have to we have to be worthy of that trust and be very responsible who we lend the money to. So if someone is not uh, salaried, um, it's a bit more difficult for us to ascertain that that person will have a constant stream of income to um, afford the payments that are required on the loans. Um, it's important for us to establish this because it's a uh, it's good for us and it's good for the individual. We also don't want um, individuals to over indebt themselves. So that's why we'll then end up asking for, for example, for six month bank statements to to try and get um, a bit of a longer track record in terms of your in terms of your earnings. Um, so that's the first thing I think. Um, just get getting your your financials and maybe your 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 bank transactions. Um, ready to be able to produce that uh, six months of evidence to say, hey, I've been having um, uh, consistent uh, income in, into my bank account for a period of six months. Um, so, so getting the, the funds into electronic format, um, getting a paper trail behind, um, behind your earnings. Um, the second thing is there are also property entrepreneurs out there. Uh, people who want to be investors. Um, now, as APSA, we, we've got a, a buy-to-let product um, where if you're a property investor, you can actually come to the bank and say, hey, I'm a property investor. Um, in, in, in fact, if you've got other properties, we, we also take that uh, rental income into account and you can say, I'm looking to buy this property. Um, we assess the property, we assess the area, and then we come up with a proxy for the type of rental income that you can get. Um, and we actually include uh, future rental income um, as part of the calculation as well. So we, we've also got that solution that uh, caters to property entrepreneurs. And of course, to our viewers at home, if you want to find out more about that APSA's future rental income, do uh, listen or watch rather the interview that we had with Miguel Martins uh, about two weeks ago. Another question here from Bongs Sabakwena who asks, can you re-advance on two different properties from different banks to buy one new property? Um, if I'm understanding the question, um, I'm assuming Bongs is trying to find out um, you've got uh, two separate properties, you have bonds on these properties, um, over time you've paid off these bonds, and then you've got what we call equity, so the difference between your outstanding balance and your original um, bond value. Um, so definitely, bonds. you can go back to the bank and say, can I get um, a re-advance of my funds on, on this property, and then the bond the bank makes an assessment. Um, obviously, we also look at um, affordability, whether you can afford to make um, the higher monthly payments to pay for the additional um, amount of money. And then we advance that um, those funds to you as cash. Um, and then once the cash is in your account, um, you can essentially receive the cash from two separate banks um, on two separate properties. And then it's up to you how you disperse those funds going forward. Muzi, I think we're going to leave it there for this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Zamandu. That is Muzi Wakizim, who is the manager of data analytics at AFSA Home Loans. Thank you very much for tuning into episode 35 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Zamandu Kumalo. We are back again on Monday, episode 36. We're kicking off Youth Month, so you absolutely do not want to miss that one. I hope you have a great weekend. You stay home and you stay safe. 
What is a bank at a time like this? In a world filled with uncertainties, where lives are put on hold, business paused, and working together means staying apart. At APSA, being a bank means staying connected. It means being a part of your future, providing relief at a time of need, and doing this through effective, secure online platforms. It means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant. Being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further. And that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning, an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you, helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Rigao fela, siso ke. Once as Amal San. That is African Nasty. Hi, I'm Jared Siegel. I'm a local restaurateur and the owner of Jared's Espresso Bar and Eatery in Seapoint. I'm a Cape Town local, Camps Bay born and bred, and I've been living in Sydney, Australia for the last few years. Living abroad, I've always been drawn to the mother city and I've recently decided to come back home. Taking life's cell factors into consideration, Bantry Bay has been the perfect fit for me. Living on the Atlantic seaboard really resonates with what I'm all about. From the active lifestyle, the amazing food culture, its family-friendly environment and amazing natural beauty, the quality of life we have on offer is really unique. The Atlantic Seaboard has some of the most beautiful suburbs in the country. With areas like Camps Bay and its world-renowned beach culture and the recent refurbishment of Seapoint Promenade, it's no wonder our neighborhood has such a global appeal. After a long day of hard work, there's nothing better than taking a walk along Clifton Beach, sharing a moment and watching the sunset. Trying to offer something authentic to the community, I'm not about reinventing the wheel, just doing the classics really well. And this is my neighborhood.
What is a bank at a time like this? In a world filled with uncertainties, where lives are put on hold, business paused, and working together means staying apart. At APSA, being a bank means staying connected. It means being a part of your future, providing relief at a time of need, and doing this through effective, secure online platforms. It means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant. Being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further. And that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning, an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you, helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Regal fail, sisoke. Once as Amal San. That is African Nasty.